Today we're going to be taking a look at liver function tests as part of the gastroenterology series. As a starting point, we're going to be taking a look at four of the main blood tests in the liver screen, which include our ALT, AST, ALP, and GGT. All of these substances are enzymes, and a rise in any of these enzymes might reflect some form of liver pathology, biliary pathology, or some other form of pathology, depending on which of the enzymes are increased. Before we take a look at these processes in more detail, it's worth noting that the name liver function tests is actually a bit of a misnomer. They should really be called liver injury tests. And that's because, if we go back to the basics, the cells which contain these enzymes are only going to release them if there's some form of injury. And this could be via infections, toxins, autoimmune conditions, or cancers. When we have any of these triggers, it damages the cell and as a result, the enzymes which the cell carries end up leaking into the blood, where they're picked up on our blood tests. We do also have a few markers of synthetic liver function, which include albumin, INR, and bilirubin, but we'll focus on these in a different video. If we know the locations of the cells which contain each enzyme, we can work out where the pathology is when we get a rise in that enzyme. To illustrate this, let's take a look at ALT and AST first, which stand for alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase respectively. ALT is found predominantly in the liver cells or the hepatocytes, and if we get injury to these hepatocytes, it will result in the enzyme being leaked. Examples of injuries to hepatocytes can include pathologies such as hepatitis, alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or particular toxins or overdoses, and any of these factors would result in a rise in the ALT level. In comparison, AST is found in the liver, the muscle, and the heart, so the hepatocytes, skeletal myocytes, and cardiomyocytes, so damage to any of these cell types will result in a rise in AST. In terms of the individual pathologies, Damage to the hepatocytes might be caused by the same process as we've already mentioned, so over hepatitis, alcoholic and non-alcoholic liver diseases. Injury to the musculoskeletal system might be caused by rhabdomyolysis, which is rapid breakdown of muscle, or myositis, which is inflammation of the muscle. In regards to cardiac pathology, there might be myocardial infarctions or heart failure processes which damage the cardiomyocytes. Now one thing you might have noticed is that both ALT and AST are found inside the liver, so the hepatocytes carry both of these enzymes. This means that if we have a combined rise in ALT and AST, it's highly suggestive of liver pathology. Alternatively, if we only have a rise in our AST value, it's more likely to be a muscle injury or cardiac pathology, and that's because if we truly had a liver injury, we would expect both enzymes to be raised rather than just one. Let's now turn towards our other two liver enzymes, which include GGT and ALP, which stand for gamma glutamyl transferase and alkaline phosphatase, respectively. GGT is found predominantly in the cells of the biliary tract, so damage to any of the biliary cells will result in the enzyme leaking into the blood. Examples of possible pathologies can include some level of biliary obstruction, where there's backflow of bile, or primary sclerosing or primary biliary cholangitis, which are inflammatory autoimmune conditions. Any of these pathologies will cause a rise in the levels of GGT. In comparison, ALP is found in the biliary tract, bone, and placenta, so the biliary cells, osteocytes, and placenta cells. And again, damage to any of these cell types will result in a rise in ALP. Looking at the individual pathologies, damage to the biliary cells might be caused by the same processes we mentioned for GGT. In terms of osteocyte damage, this might be caused by conditions such as Paget's disease of the bone, where there's a problem with renewal of bone cells, or osteomalacia, where there's softening of the bone, often due to a lack of vitamin D or calcium. Finally, patients who are pregnant might also have a rise in ALP due to the growth of the placental cells. Now, again, you might have noticed that there is one degree of overlap between both enzymes. They're both found within the biliary tract system. 
This means that the biliary tract cells contain both GGT and ALP inside of them. If we therefore get a rise in both GGT and ALP, it's highly suggestive of a biliary tract pathology, or cholestasis, whereas if we only have a rise in our ALP value, it's more suggestive of bone disorders or pregnancy instead. Just to have all of the information in one place, we have a table here which shows the primary locations of each enzyme and what an increase in that enzyme level might indicate. There are also a few key patterns in liver function tests which are worth remembering as they can help to narrow down the differential diagnoses. For example, if a patient has an AST to ALT ratio of greater than 2 to 1, so the AST value is double the ALT value, it's highly suggestive of alcoholic liver disease. The reason why this occurs is because alcohol depletes vitamin B6, and this is a vitamin which is required for ALT synthesis. Therefore, when there's some form of liver damage, although both of the enzymes might go up, it's likely that the ALT will not increase as much due to this synthetic effect. Additionally, if a patient has an AST or ALT value greater than 1000, it's highly indicative of an acute severe hepatocellular injury. So for example, acute hepatitis or ischemic hepatitis. Finally, if someone has an isolated rise in their GGT level, it's suggestive of chronic alcohol consumption. And this happens because alcohol induces one of the enzymes that's required for GGT synthesis. To cement our understanding of LFTs, let's take a look at a few practice questions. In this case, we have a 35-year-old male who presents with jaundice and right upper quadrant discomfort. He recently returned from travel abroad with plenty of street food. And we have our liver function panel here. If you want, you can pause the video and try to work out the most likely diagnosis based on the results. Working through the question, we can see that we have quite a high rise in our ALT and AST values, with an additional rise in the bilirubin. If we go back to first principles, we know that AST is found in the liver, muscle, and cardiac cells, while ALT is found predominantly in the liver only. Because the AST and ALT values are both elevated, this makes it more likely for there to be some form of liver pathology. And as the level of ALT is greater than 1000, it's suggestive of an acute hepatocellular injury. Using details from the travel history, we can see that the most likely diagnosis in this case is therefore hepatitis A. Moving on to the second question, we have a 34-year-old female with a background of ulcerative colitis who presents with four months history of fatigue and right upper quadrant discomfort. She's on regular sulfasalzine for the ulcerative colitis, and we have our liver function panel here. Again, if you want, you can pause the video and attempt to work out the most likely diagnosis. In this case, the patient has quite a significant rise in their ALP and GDT levels. And while there is a rise in the ALT and AST as well, it's not as profound. If we go back to first principles, we know that ALP is found in the biliary cells, the bone and placenta, while GDT is found predominantly in the biliary tract. Because we have a rise in both ALP and GDT, it's most likely some form of biliary pathology which is driving this increase. In this scenario, the patient has a background of ulcerative colitis, and their history is more chronic. This suggests a more inflammatory process, and the most likely diagnosis would be a primary sclerosing cholangitis. Let's take a look at one final case, which involves a 74-year-old male with irritable bowel syndrome who presents with long-standing abdominal pain and worsening hip pain over the past four months. And we have our liver function panel here. Working through this case, we can see that the patient has a significant rise in their ALP level, while the rest of the enzymes are normal. We know that ALP is found in the biliary cells, the bone, and the placenta. And we also know that GGT is found predominantly in the biliary tract. If there was a biliary pathology, we would therefore expect there to be a rise in both ALP and GGT. But in this case, the GGT level is normal which makes it less likely for there to be a biliary tract problem. As a result, the rise in the ALP is most likely coming from a different body system, so either the bone or a placenta. And because we're dealing with a 74-year-old male, 
is most likely to be a bone pathology. In this case, the most likely diagnosis would be a Paget's disease of the bone. To finish off, we have a summary slide here which outlines the key points from this session. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.